Hey everybody, this is Ross. Before we get started with today's video, I wanted to let you guys know that we have some fig trees for sale. Once again, they are available on FigVid. So if you guys are interested in buying one of these trees outright from me of some of the really special varieties that I grow, um, I would go down to the link in the description. Uh, it'll send you right over to FigVid. There's a plants and cuttings sales section down there. And then once you get on FigVid, you just sign up, create an account, plug in your address, and then if you buy one of these trees outright from me, I will ship this directly to your house. Uh, this time around, we have quite a nice selection. There are some really uh, favorites of mine that I have for sale, although some of them are already gone. We already sold, I think, two Black Celeste trees, a Neruccio de Elba. We sold a Green Michurinska. So things are going quick. Um, but we do have some of these more common varieties, like this is an LDA, a Long Dedute, that we tasted a Breva of not too long ago. We also are going to talk about Smith very soon here in this video, and we have some Smith trees for sale. So, uh, yeah, guys, check out that link down in the description, and thanks for watching this video. All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're looking at a variety called Smith. This is truly one of my absolute favorite varieties, and I think, believe it or not, even though we've talked about it so much in the past, I've done so many videos on this. We've already talked about it already twice this year in two different videos. I don't even think the YouTube algorithm really appreciates <laughs> all this attention I give this variety. I don't know if this really helps me in any way, but I just think it's so special that if you guys want that amazing experience, this is the variety. It's got everything, flavor, productivity. It does really well in pretty much every climate. And I just, in the, th in the past, I think I haven't given it enough credit. I really don't think I have, uh, which is kind of crazy to say, because I was really the one to promote this variety more than anybody else years ago to encourage people to grow this. Here's one year that actually, it looks, it was incredible. It's kind of dried up here on the tree. I went um, away this weekend, a little bit on vacation, came back uh, a day and a half later and the things dried up on the tree. So it's amazing, I find, how well this fig does here and pretty much anywhere else. There is one caveat and then I think that this variety does require a little bit more light than some of the other varieties. And that's just um, kind of built into the genetics it just needs a little bit more light to set those fruit buds than others. But, uh, you know, even here, I'm getting seven hours of light. These are container trees. We really don't prune them all that much. And um, they do super well with even just seven hours of light. But I would highly recommend this, this thing really does, you know, require more light hours and intensity of light than um, other varieties. I have uh, made the comparison, especially with this fruit here. This is, to me, it's like eating three figs in one. It's like eating a black Madeira because the flavor is so good. The flavor is literally among the best. Uh, and it tastes kind of like a black Madeira. It even reminds me of another fig, Col de Dom, because the texture is super thick, super jammy. Absolutely amazing. And it reminds me of the third fig, which I've been noticing this year, and why I kind of want you know wanted to bring some attention to this in this video, is that it reminds me of Celeste. It really does because the skin is like that waterproof jacket that we've talked about in other videos. Now we talked about the shape of the fruits and why it's so important. Because so you know Smith guys, it doesn't have the right shape. This fig here is is just very fat and squatty. Um, it does droop correctly, so the eyes are always pointed downwards. They're never pointed towards the sky, so that helps. The neck is quite pliable in that sense, and the fig is large enough so that it hangs correctly when it swells. But the amazing part about it that I've noticed this year is that, and really it's always been like that, but the hang time is rather short. Compared to the average, it's, it's definitely lower than the average fig, so it doesn't have to hang long on the tree. Even though it did rain Friday, um, it rained a little bit earlier this, actually it rained Thursday and Friday, 
So this fig, even though it's dried, kind of dried up on the tree, it looks like a ruby for goodness sakes. This guy actually um, was exposed to rain and still dried on the tree. So it has really good drying capabilities as well. And it even has that waterproof jacket that we talk about with Celeste. And that this is why I think it dries so well is that the water hits the skin of the fig like a rain jacket and just slides right off. It's hydrophobic, as someone said on one of my videos recently. Shout out to that guy. Um, so it doesn't absorb that water to the skin and then do a fast absorption of water and then split. This fig rarely ever splits. In fact, it doesn't even crack that often because of that amazing skin that it has. Um, let's try this one. Guys, I'm telling you, you want this experience of eating a really good fig, even a really good piece of fruit. I mean, this is like literally so much better than the majority of fruits you can grow. Not even to mention like just buying figs at the store. Like let's not even talk about that. This is so much better than all the fruit you can grow for the most part. Other than maybe like a really well-ripened astringent persimmon, this is like nature's concoction. There are very few pastries and like, and, and things you can make, man-made things that equal this. Like, I promise you, it's just nuts. And guess what? Smith's now has become like relatively popular. Every collector should have this fig. Anyone serious about growing figs at all should have this fig. Um, it's just that good. It's so good. It does well everywhere. There's one other point I want to make. Because we just noticed some differences this year with it. The productivity has been insane. As I, I, I may have mentioned, it produced 20 Braba. We talked about the Brabas that we ripened. Between my three trees, there was 20 Braba. I didn't even think this variety was supposed to produce Brava. It's not. It's so strange. Um, and the main crop now, I'm gonna get a second crop of main crop. See this up here? This is the fruit that we had actually because of our greenhouse head start. It produced this fruit and some of the others I've already picked. And then up here, it continued to grow and now is producing a second set of main crop. So it's ultra productive. I do find that this variety is just very productive in general. But if we measure productivity by the amount of light required to set the fruit buds, you could argue that Smith is not a productive variety. But this year, the trees certainly have been. When we did my top eight, we ranked them, and Smith was just below things like Neruccio de Elba, Verdino del Nord. I think it's right up there. I think it's right up there with a few others like Black Celeste, um, Verdolino. Um, I think Smith, because it's so flavorful, because it has such a nice texture, because it gives you that experience, and also because it really is just one of the most reliable figs I got. And it always produces, almost always produces a high quality fruit. It is just in that upper echelon of figs. Um, so for my money, you know, <laughs> you gotta get this thing. I know I've talked about it so much, but there it is again. Thank you guys for watching this one. We'll see you soon, all right? Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. Catch you guys later. Take care.